just bless your holy name, oh God. Oh, you are wonderful. No matter what is going on, no matter what obstacles we face, we come into your presence and we say, blessed are you, oh God. And we thank you for you say, take my yoke. It is easy. Take my burden. It is light. And we bless your holy name. So we've come and we say to you, who sits on the throne, blessing and glory and honor to you. There is none that compares to you, Lord. We just bless your holy name.
And when you're moving, you're speaking, that we can see you speaking. Lord, that you're changing our mindsets of being human-based to being based on you, Father, who's more than a man. And we thank you, Lord. And now, Father, you have sent even fathers, even generals into the area and said, it's harvest time. It's time. It's time. It's time. It's time. Lord, there is a rising church in Lower so young, a rising body that understands your kingdom principles. Houses of David, no more houses of Saul. And we're saying, Lord, we need the harvest to bring them in. And Lord, the hearts of, of leaders, current leaders, operating in Saul's kingdom. Lord, give them the courage and the heart to understand that you mentioned houses of David being established, meeting houses.
bless you, God. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Father. We hear the cry, Lord, of those in their wilderness, Lord, of those that are dry in the dry land, God. We hear their cries. We hear them, Lord. And you heard them, Lord. You heard them crying out for a place to live, a place where they can go, where they can be saved, Lord Jesus, where they can be healed, where they can be whole. Father, in the name of Jesus, we are calling those, we are calling those who are under oppression in darkness, God. We're calling those who are, who are homeless, Lord, spiritually homeless, Lord, as well as physically, Jesus. Father, we are calling them back to you, Lord Jesus. You make a way, you make a way, you make a way for them to come to the fountains of life, for them to hear your, the words of salvation, your voice calling them, Lord. We speak to the hands and the feet and the body of Christ, Lord. Those who are going, Lord, to find these souls, those who are going out, God, to invite these souls of these people, Father. There is power in your name that nothing will hinder, God. Your work in each person, Lord. Their destiny in you, Jesus Christ. And your church will not be sleeping, will not be distracted or too busy, Jesus Christ. You're breaking those chains, God, so that your children can go and run and go and find Find those who are in need, Lord, in the power of the Spirit, God, in the power of the Spirit, Lord, as you encounter the woman and the whale, God, as you encounter her, Jesus Christ, these people, Lord, your children, God, you're awakening us in your goodness, in your love, in your mercy, in the power of the Spirit, God, in words, words of, of, of discernment, Jesus Christ, of a, a word of science, God, a word that we speak to the hearts, a word of wisdom, Lord, as you spoke to the woman in the well, Lord Jesus. There is power in your name, Lord. There is power in your name to open our eyes, Lord, to be to be alert, God, of those who you say they're ready. Go, 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 go and bring them. Go and invite them. Go and tell them about me. Go and tell them there is power in the name of Jesus, God. We're speaking, Lord, to the children, to the women and the men, Lord Jesus, a hunger in their hearts, God, that they will not be able to sleep, they will not be able to be calm until they run, they run, they run, Lord Jesus, we're they speaking life, they run to you, Father, we speak life, we're speaking life to this region, Lord, and the tent that is prepared, oh God, is prepared for those who are thirsty, for those who are hungry, God, we're they speaking joy in you. 
you, Jesus Christ. There is power in your name. There is power in your name.
burning in their heart. And I haven't been able to get that out of my mind. And I come before you, Father, and I want that burning. Put that burning for you in my heart, oh God. Have mercy on us and bring it back this burning that we so need.
draw, draw, let the sound draw, let the heavens draw the name. Lord, man in his pride has counted numbers and gauged his, gauge his success on his numbers. We gauge our success in how well we see you and know you. But now we call for those numbers to come into your kingdom because you love them. Not because it builds us up, but because they belong to you. I saw something in my spirit that I want to share with you. Um, when you were playing the drum, I mean the trumpet, the first time. Not this last, but the first time um, a few minutes ago, I saw angels blowing a trumpet on seven mountains tops in this area, and I saw a fire on each one. And it was a call. And I saw then the Lord take. It was like the mountains were in a sort of a circle, you know. So um, it was like He took His hand and He pulled out and He started digging. In the, in the earth, around, you know, in, in between all these mountains. And I saw him pull out sludge, you know. And he, like, dug really deep, and then I saw him put dirt in, stepping in it. He was making it firm. And then between two of the mountains, I saw really heavy um, rivers flooding out. And I thought, Lord, what about the other parts? You know, there's seven mountains here. And then um, they were dry, but then I saw them have like a trickle, like you would turn on a, a faucet where you see the trickle. And then it got bigger and bigger. And they all joined together at the end, and they were um, one huge river. And I asked the Lord, where does that river go? Because I knew it had to do with here. Um, where does that river go? And he said, it's going to flood to the nations. And it's a very deep, healthy, powerful river. When all these ones came together, it was it, and it was clean. And they were flowing to the nations. chance to give, but I, I want to do this tonight. There is something going on in this region, and more than something, you know about the tent revival, and I think tonight what we want to do is, in the back there, I'm asking that we sow into this, into the revival that's happening in the tent in Murphy. This is not just an old-time tent revival. Sorry, people say that, and I say I always want to tell you guys, stop saying that all the time. There's nothing old about him. He's eternal. It's always fresh and new. Amen. Okay? But I understand what it means. It sounds familiar to our ears, but see, this one doesn't have that familiar sound. You know why? It has it on the outside a bit, but on the inside in this room, this sound is, this, our hearts are perpetuating and propelling this. So you can dress it up and look the same, but on the inside, it's Superman. Did you, you get that? That's the picture I have. A changed body. The clothes may look the same. A little bit. But what comes out is obviously not going to be the same. And where the heading is quite remarkable. So what I'm going to ask is that as we bless the Lord, in that back there, this, this is going all towards this... Awakening, and I, I've asked Jim to tell. He shared something with me that really solidified a picture of how the body works. 
And the more I'm around military guys and government guys, the more I've come to realize that ministry was never intended to be a church religious term. It wasn't. First of all, the word ministry, and many don't know this, is not a church term. It's a governmental term. Because when you have parliament and kingdoms and a democracy, they call their departments of government ministries. England doesn't have departments of defense. They have ministry of defense, ministry of agriculture. So see, when they would talk about ministries, they were always had the governmental mentality in their mind. Didn't you? We're the ones that kind of separated that out. And so we're seeing such an awakening of ministry. Ministry. And in each ministry, there is authority. There's a tremendous authority. But there are generals and colonels and majors and lieutenant colonels and then captains. And you have them all. And then you have your, you know, you guys have to be the sheriff. Go ahead. Well, uh, yeah. When the lady got up and said that she saw seven mountains, the Lord really had that stirring in my spirit from some time now since I learned about the seven mountains of cultural society and uh, it's one of the things that they use during the um, National Day of Prayer. The Lord's really been instilling it into my spirit stronger and stronger for us not to just wait for National Day of Prayer but for us to look these seven mountains up and I like what you said there Ken. It is a governmental term. It's a strategic plan. It's a military force. It's an army that's going to be going forward to claim back this, the kingdom of God. And we've got to find which mountain the Lord's really stirring in our spirit because from one of the mountains that she spoke about is the religious mountain. It's the mountain we stand on. The other is a family mountain. Because in this region, the Bible Belt, they called it, was there faith in God and faith in family that holds this region together. We should stand on the other six mountains, five mountains united with God and with family and our friends and as many aliens, strangers, foreign, whatever they may be, if they believe in the one true God as we do, can worship. And as the sister said, those two flow into the other, the other five and they make one big river. And they do flow to the nations. It will make this great awakening a great awakening. It's a good word. Thank you. Well, I just want to say that before we got here, we thought we were going to be a little early. And uh, Julia had her papers about the seven mountains. And we stopped on the side of the road, and she read them to me with a large anointing on the way here. Wow. And she has some papers. Maybe she'll give you one. <laughs> Got to say this part. I, I was prompted by the Spirit to ask how long this was going to take to get to, I guess, the beginning. I think the beginning's already whatever, but um, I was prompted to ask how long. And I um, I saw three like spheres, like moons, but and, and sun, but it was like partly was uh, half was sun, half was moon. I, I don't get what that means, but it was like three, like oblations, I guess. But I saw three. So, um, I think that suddenly soon. Before I came down here to the gathering place, 
the Lord was speaking to me about the seven mountains as well. <laughs> I'm just God. Um, and he was saying um, that the church, his people, are going to go into all these mountains. And that's where that those rivers, that, that life, that resurrection power is going to be. And he is preparing us, and he wants us to be in the, uh, an influence in every area, um, the arts, in business, in the government, every area. And 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 it's it's that time now, and the Lord is like really uh, breaking all the structures and of religious. Uh, settings of uh, like uh, prisons, little prisons that keep us captive in, in, in not being an influence in, in establishing the kingdom in the whole world and that those, those structures are breaking and we're going to be moving and we're going to be taking the gospel and going to take everywhere we go in every area uh, as my sister was saying, as God and, and what is bo like in, in your heart that that is tears up and say God and 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 he was showing me like Nehemiah you have to have that fire in your heart like Karen was saying to go and before telling everybody about your 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 plan uh, go and in that time and do research research that area research it in every in every way possible and and get knowledge about it and pray about it and, and today the Lord in the morning was taking me to, to places where I saw literally so people that were bind in, 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 in deserts. I don't know if it was the Middle East or where, but it was like I, I it, and he was saying, I want you to research, I want you to, to, to know about that and start praying and I'm breaking the, the, the chains of oppression over these people. And, 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 and there are, I mean, I was just speaking like places of refuge, people that are, the church is gonna start getting in those places in the community, building things, doing things that actually will go and take those people out of the, of the, of, of the chains of, and darkness. And, and it's life, and I see rivers of life, and, and, and I'm just like, Lord, here I am, send me, and I'm asking, Lord, just show me, uh, and, and whatever it takes, study, go, whatever, uh, intercession, fasting, praying, going, speaking, uh, God will be in connections, but the church is, is going to affect, I mean, it's His kingdom, it's His body. It is time that, that, that the light is shining and, and the darkness has to retreat. It is just, um, dark is just absence of light, but the light is shining in us. Father, we bless you, Lord, and we thank you, Holy Spirit. We thank you, Father, for this time, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for those of your children, God. And, and I will lift up Father Jean McCarroll this night, Lord Jesus. Those who have been shouting out and screaming, Lord, in the streets and saying, away to a people. There's no more time to be sitting inside the churches and just doing and nothing, Lord, but Father, in the name of Jesus, God, I speak to all those, Lord, that are going to be moving, moving in vans, in tents, in buses, in, in on food, or whatever they need to do, but they are going to be establishing all over the place, wherever you tell them to go, they'll go, Father. There is power in your name because you bring teams, you bring people together, Father. You're breaking the walls, Lord, that have had your church captive for years, God, and you're taking us out there, Lord, in positions in government, positions in business, God. You give us creativity, Father, to, to go, Lord, to all these mountains, Father, the arts, God. There is power in your name. Social media, Lord, comes back to you, Jesus Christ. Holy people, Lord, godly people, Lord, in the name of Jesus, establishes in, in, in education, Lord, every in every area, Lord. There is power in your name, in medicine, God. 
Father, in the name of Jesus, agriculture, God, and godly people, Lord, to stop poisoning, Lord, this community, this land, your, the earth, God. There is power in your name, your Lord. We're speaking that awakening that will awake the nations, God, and your children will come, Father. And the first one we're speaking life, Lord, is the family one, Jesus. We're speaking to the mothers, to be mothers again, God, to be with their children, Lord, to take care of their families. We're speaking to the fathers to come back, to be those fathers, God, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Father, together, Lord, we come against divorce, we come against all kinds of destruction, Father, that have been uh, making the nations, Father, to to to, to birth all, all this uh, evil, Lord, around it, Lord, with children, God, that you're surviving, Lord, and, and learning from the other uh, sources that are evil, Father, but it's now we're coming back, Jesus Christ, to that unity of faith, to that place in you, Jesus Christ. Life of the Spirit and resurrection power, God. Life, life, your love, your love, your love, Jesus. And your children, Lord, will not be afraid to talk in public, to talk in governmental places, God. Anywhere you put them, you send them to schools, God. They will be, not be ashamed, Lord Jesus, but your voice will be heard, God. And we bless you. And we thank you, Jesus. And we glorify your name, God. Righteousness and justice, God. In the medical field, Lord, no more, no more hiding, Jesus, of the things that can bring cure to you, to the people, God. No more injections, no more things that are poisoning, Lord, the, the minds, Lord, of your children, the bodies, Lord. There is power in your name, redemption, Lord, redemption. No more greed, Father, ruling and reigning in this, in this, in the nations, Father. But you, Jesus, you, the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings. Kings. You, the creator of heaven and earth, you, my Lord, you, my Lord, you, my Lord, and the nature is crying out. Your creation is crying out for the manifestations of the, the manifestation of the sons and daughters, God, that will arise, Lord, arise, arise. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, God. Open the eyes of the blind, Jesus Christ. Salvation, salvation, resurrection power. There is power in your name. There is power in your name. I had this horn that was given to me as a friend, and it's actually what I what it is. Vibrates the sound of, of the mouth for me. It's the resonance I hear, you know, and you know, talking to the mountains and overcome. But I'm just going to be, I guess the term is obedient. Jim, I barely know you. And I'm seeing, you know, I don't want to use the word Sherpa as a leader. I don't want to use the word Sherpa as a leader or one that knows how to get there because I'm afraid you, that's too much of a burden for us. <laughs> we'll, we'll, let, we'll let Father, we'll, we'll let the King do that. But um, I'm, I, I need to blow the resonance of this into your heart. And I don't know if it's to identify or to ground, but I see a big grounding because the, it's, it's, you know, we've always talked about mountaintops and the scripture talks about mountaintops, but it's the heart of the mountain. Matters, and I don't know what's to come. I just know that when we resonate, that's what it is. It's it's it's, it's all resonance. So I'm going to walk over there. I'm going to ask you to stand, and I'm going to blow this thing into your heart and say, Father, I don't know why. I don't know what what travels on this or what it does, but I don't know you, but I do love you. I don't, <laughs> and. If you were proselytizing to me, I'd just say amen just so I wouldn't get thumped on. <laughs> but I, I, Father, whatever, whatever this is, just, just ask that resonance, that, 
and in the, the heart of the mountain, the sound of the mountain, the resonance of the mountain. Well, you do the rest. writing a check. We're going to give it right to Jim. So, Jim, it's Christ for all people. People? Is it people? C-S-A-P. C-S-A-P. F. F. F as in Frank. C-F-A-P. That's all I have to, and it goes to him. Uh, I want you to know something yesterday. As I was saying before, this is remarkable because this is the mountain. I, I want to change, I want to say that stand up and go, I'm a prophet and all this, but I'm going to say something that's pretty prophetic. We need, and it's corrective, we need to stop saying he's going to. Yes. Stop that mindset. Yes. That is a curse. It's a yes. curse of our linear bodies. We are eternal. See, when God says something, don't I know it from the beginning to the, from the, the end from the beginning? That's good. I, I'm saying this, it's not a, a you're bad and wrong. No, it's a time, okay, we're in a time that's as when he says it, he's doing it. I have, I'm going to tell you, in this room, we had 100 days before this building was destroyed, that literally things were manifesting instantly. I mean instantly. At one point here, at this, and then we're in this time. I'm not talking about this room. I'm talking about the region. At one point, we were saying, calling out of Babylon. He was calling us out of Babylon, calling us out of Babylon and return to Zion. And at that very moment, there were people standing on Mount Zion calling my cell phone on my keyboard. Mm. Saying, Ken, we, you were the trumpeter last year at the Feast of Trumpets here. We missed that sound, and we need your sound back here. And that was the same time we were singing it, and I saw that later. I mean, things manifest. They're coming to what they call an inf moment, where Chuck Pierce talks about that, where Kairos and Kronos come together. We need to change a mindset and say, well, God's going to, God's going to. If you're in that mindset, you're always, you know, from here to here, if you keep going halfway, you never get there. Amen. Yeah. Never. Great and 
Christians do that and actually speak that over themselves constantly. Why? Because I'm going to be honest with you, I'm going to discern it, I'm going to pull it out right now. It's based on fear, afraid to say something. So it's easier to say it's in the future because then people, it doesn't happen. It's fear. No, God is doing Let me tell you, I gave, yeah. we gave an account here a couple of weeks ago of what he's done in this last year. And he is turning the mindsets. So what we say is coming. Every word that was spoken here tonight is not coming. It's been happening. Mm -hmm. Amen. And not only has it been happening, and I'm saying it, don't, don't, I, in, in this room, I'm telling, not in the room, in other places, please don't ever tell me, I, Elvin and I, I've had very serious discussions about this. I will not, and she's laughing. I get furious. I can't stand hearing that stuff anymore. Yeah. You, God's not about to move. He's been moving. Yes, and he said, to give us eyes to see. And here's one last thing. Jesus said, I only just do what I see my father doing and say what I, what I hear him saying. Do you think he was talking the way we see things move and talk? He could look into the, he could look out and see these people were ready, these weren't, I'll go there. And he, because he saw it, he knew the Father was moving. He recognized the Father moving. Yeah. Do you recognize the Father moving in this, in this region? Great word. And because he's moving in this region, he sends people and says, now's the time. Yeah. He said, because he has to break the mindset, otherwise we cannot see him moving. See, you don't see, you don't hear him talking in this manner when we talk corporately see him talking. Mm. See, we think, oh, we got to hear and understand in English. Maybe I'll speak German, then we can all understand. Do you, understand? Do you, do you get it? No. No, but do you understand the point? The point is this, is that we have to be able to look and say, oh my gosh, he's moving. That's him speaking. You got to get past language into the motion. That's a sound. Yes, amen. And see, people are like, oh, the sound is pretty and playing when we make music. Enough with music already. Yeah. Amen. I'm looking for the sound. And you think, you know what comes out of his throne? Thunderings and lightnings, yeah. not ukuleles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, amen. And I'm sorry. 49 years as a musician studying, seriously. 49. And I'm telling you, stop being music-based. Be sound-based. It's his voice. And I'm being honest with you. When we begin to see him moving, you see that sound. You think what comes out of you? Wow. Wait till you hear what comes out of you. Man. Yeah. All right? Stop saying, he's going to. He's going to. He's going to. That's it. That's that linear thinking trying to bring eternity into a linear thinking. You're in him who occupies eternity. He is, was, and is to come. So when he says it, he's doing it. Right. Totally. And, I, and, and if we are never going to see it, we say, well, God's going to do this, and he's going to raise this. No, he's doing it! Amen. Proclaim a matter, and it will be done. Because, and it is being done. I see the beginning from the end, and we go, well, he's going to. Well, he's already seen the end. Well, he's doing it. And he's going to do it. And he has done it. We, this is the eternity of mindset we need. So when we are talking about the mountains, we still have this thinking he's going to be doing this. I'm telling you what, I have been sitting at eight years. No, oh gosh, what am I talking about? 30 years ago, he talked to me about a mountain of media before there was any of the mountain stuff. I've been, this whole place is dedicated towards capturing the move and motion and sounds of heaven from flowing from us into a state of the art and then influenced media. We've already influenced 170 countries. We've been in all, and to me, please don't tell me God's going to do it. He's been doing it. It's just, do we have eyes to recognize it or does it, because he speaks to us. Here's another thing. I really want to help us through with something. People get this idea that God, oh, wow, he's talking to us. Please, the second he talks to me, I want to tell you what I do. Well, if you're talking to me, you've already revealed it to others at the same time. Mm -hmm. It's not your original idea, right. and it's only brand new to you, but not to the kingdom. Right. Nothing is new under the sun. And that's another hindrance, because we say, no, brother, you know, he's, uh, he gave me word, and this is it, and I know it. And you're listening, going, well, he's been doing that. 
And you're afraid to say because you don't want you don't want to discourage the brother. But you're already killing truth. And the truth is, he's speaking to you. That means he's giving you, this is what it means. This is what it means. You ready? This is what that means. It means he's giving you eyes to see. And he gave you ears to hear. Oh, but we want to encourage you to know. I, I encourage you to say, thank you. He's opened up your ears. He's opened up your eyes. Jesus didn't say, give him something brand new, each one of them. He said, no, open up your eyes to see. Right? You know? So I'm, I'm talking practical. These little, isn't it amazing? These little shifts. I'm not changing any doctrine here. Just repositioning. The big word's repositioning. So when Brother Jim last night is talking, and he said something last, you know, he, he, Messed He put something into clarity. Guys with this type of anointing can, that like he carries puts in order things. And because, well, it's not just his marine training, it's his kingdom of God soldier training, too. Yeah. And it just goes, wow. And I say, yes, yes, sir, I understand that now. I understand it. It blows, and, and because his understanding of authority and order, it blows apart this hierarchy that we can tend to have in our thinking of honor and church. But it's necessary. But what it did is it brought a tremendous freedom and clarity. And it says, and if we can see it, we know this. God is not about to. He's been. You don't have this huge awakening just all of a sudden. Boop! There it is. Did you know that? You know, you don't... There's no suddenly until there's preparation. Let's fix back just, oh, but that means suddenly. No, this is what suddenly means. Suddenly there was a rushing wind in the upper room. How long were they waiting? Uh, suddenly the priests in the temple tabernacle, uh, when the temple dedication of Solomon, and they, were, they couldn't stand by ministering of the cloud, and God had done this suddenly. That was chapter 5 of Second Chronicles. You know how many chapters? And no, chapters in that time, it's a long period of time. It took to build the temple and prepare and get things ready for God to do it suddenly. What is happening here now in this region will seem like a suddenly, but the right. preparation has been forever. So what I preach to those that I get a chance to impart to is that your, the goal is, is never oh, to just sit here in front of people and bless the Lord and be a musician or sing. 99.9% .9 is the building and preparation Amen. that is not seen. Right. Totally. totally. Completely. Totally. And if you're not building, you're waiting, you want to just walk in and be a superstar. Doesn't work. You know, maybe a one-hit wonder, like they say in the business, I don't know. But So anyway, I'm telling you, so in this room, I make this decree, what you're about to hear, and say, Lord, Lord. <laughs> forgive us for saying you're about to, or are you going to? You are. You are. He said, I, that's it. He just said that. He said, that's very good. You know, um, oh, a couple of things. Our English is really funny. You know, he says, be ye perfect for I am perfect. You know, we think that's a verb. It's not a verb. You're in him who's perfect. Be ye perfect conjugated correctly is you are perfect because he's perfect. He made you perfect in him. Though, are we still being transformed? Yes. It is not an action verb. If you hear it in other languages or speak other languages, you would read that. And we, we in English put a, a verb to it, and it's not. It's a state, statement uh, of clarity of who you are. So, uh, and I say that, oh, what was I going to tell you? Oh, 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 of who you, uh, you are. Oh, he's, he's not the God of I'm going to. He didn't say, Moses didn't say, what is your name? He says, my name is I'm going to. He said, my name is I Am. Yeah. Right. That's who he is. And he occupies eternity. In this very moment, he occupies eternity. That means if we're in him, we're in him who occupies eternity, all moments. It doesn't make sense in eternity of he's going to. It's he is, was, and is to come. He's done it, he's going to, and he's going to keep doing it. Amen. So I'm putting that, that cloud here because... What Jim has, just to share this bit and share what you got, is so powerful 
that in this atmosphere we get to see God move and join together with all these things. It's with all these anointings, all these departments, rather, I mean ministries, where nobody is fighting. There were pastors there from other churches. Nobody was trying to be the apostle over it. Nobody. We just recognize who had the authority in that. And everyone's cool with it. As a matter of fact, everyone was splendidly submitted to it. I mean, people that talked last night in our little group, splendid. I mean, people, look, there were several of us in there that have done things in stadiums. And, and yet, last night was the most important thing because of what was happening. So, yeah. man, just, just, just talk anyway. I, I don't know what you were going to want me to talk about, but I got yeah, it. But, 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 just, but, but yeah. whatever's on your heart. That, that, um, that talk to me. I came here exhausted. These, these meetings are exhausting. And people don't understand all that pizza, pieces and parts behind it. And um, everybody goes there and they see the tin and the sound and and they don't realize that we borrow almost everything in that tent. We don't have our own chairs. We don't have our own stage. We certainly don't have a trailer. <laughs> we got no place to really put that tent. So, I mean, there's a million parts and pieces and classes and prayer meetings and meetings and uh, phone conferences and text messages and people all over. And, and I came over here and I actually, I don't know if I fell asleep or not. <laughs> I'm usually worshiping and I'm hearing from the Lord. I didn't really hear him say anything. I was just resting for the first time in my life in this room, just resting and being recharged. It was amazing. And I didn't see any mountains. I didn't hear any mountains. Um, really, I don't really have a word for you. That's unusual for me if you know me. I usually have my shoes off by now and preaching, but... Um, when you guys talk about the mountains, and I know the teaching, I've been to the class, I, I, I understand it. Um, Ken's right. It's not we're going to. We already are. He already is. And, and if we didn't have the cameras on right here recording this, I wish I could tell you the favor that God's put on our ministry through people in government, in education, in music, in media, in business, in industry, and the favor, and I mean... I just, I just can't say it. I don't, it, it. Lord doesn't want it to be. Doesn't want the enemy to know the places that doors are open to us to go into minister and to share the gospel, and and it's an amazing thing that's happening. And when we show up, Ken, you're so right. They're already there. You shouldn't do it this way, brother. This is not the. But we're on your side. I love the Lord too. So guess what? Just don't do that again. You hear what I'm saying? Like I said, I wish you came for us all, but you, you just shout right now. Mm. And not that we're doing anything wrong, but there is a million rules and regulations in America to keep you from ever getting into some of these places, to keep you from ever doing ministry at this level on a shoestring budget. And I do mean a shoestring budget. <laughs> and, um, People have looked at our, I mean, people that really know ministry looked at our books and said, how did you do all those crusades with so little money? He stretched it, I guess. I don't know. But when I, but the other thing I was going to say, I mean, they're there. They're, 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 people are out there and love the Lord and are looking for you to be doing something also for the Lord so they can bless you, so they can open that door. Let me just say it like this. If the school superintendent is a Christian in name only, he'll never call me back. Do you see, do you see what I didn't say right there? Make sure that when we vote, we should be picking who's in there. That's right. And as somebody that loves the Lord. Yes. And make sure that if God touches your heart, too many people are saying, oh, I can't go do that. That's crooked. No, not if you're there, it's not. And, 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 and the other thing I want to say about mountains, I, I'm a Marine. I loved it. Came up through the ranks, became a Marine officer. Everybody else around here sees the beautiful scenery. I see terrain. I look at it and go, oh, boy, you could really ambush from that place. <laughs> I told Judy we went to, up to Robbinsville and dropped a couple signs off of that turnoff, and I said, oh, boy. 
We, we had this high ground right here. They, you'd never come up this road. You'd lose 30,000 men trying to take this hill right here because of the terrain. And I told you that to tell you this. We're in Christ. The principle is you want the high ground. There's no higher ground than when we're in Christ. There's no higher authority. There's no, and we're always trying to, it seems like um, Christians are always trying to lower down to fight this little lizard over here when we're in Christ. You know what I'm saying? And so if 20,000 Marines are going across the desert, why are we going to stop and mess with two guys with old rifles? We just keep going. Does that make sense? And that's what God is doing. He is touching people. He is bringing people to these revivals. He is bringing people on a street corner that have never known him. And he spoke to me a long time ago, and he said, I'm about tired of my church people. I'll say this on here, because he really said this. They got eyes they don't see. Their hearts are hardened. They're far from me. And I've called and called, and I've sent preachers, and I've sent witnesses, and they're not responding. But I'll send you to a people that don't know me. And when they come to know me, we can do something with them. We'll reach America. You hear me? And I'm looking around the room and I see that. And I see the giant quail because we always wondered what took so long. And I had a word. And this lady says, there's a giant quail God's showing me. And he's sewing it together. And you wonder what's taking so long. These are people he's preparing to come and bring this harvest. That's before I ever knew I'd do crusades. You said it right, Ken. This is not. This is a suddenly that started a long time ago, and he's right. When we look, he is doing it. He's doing it. He's doing it because we're letting him do it through us, right? But you look at it. I see the terrain, and when I, when, you, when a marine says he sees terrain, that's where we want to be, right? And so you were talking about these seven mountains, and absolutely, we're there. We need more in there. And, and I want to tell you, I'm so thankful, Ken, for what you guys do here. And just to come in there and just to sit down. <laughs> and I guess you want to talk about building authority. Understand that there's rank in the military. And so it starts from Private E1 through E9, the enlisted in it. You have the warrant officers, and you have the officers that goes up to four-star general. Right? So a general outranks a private. A general outranks a warrant officer. But if the warrant officer gets in the helicopter when it's on the ground, the general's in charge. The helicopter gets an inch off the ground, the warrant officer's in charge because he's flying. It's called building authority. That's like I'm a sergeant who's at the gate guarding it with a pistol and he's making sure the right people are coming in because they stop to a colonel. And I guess that's what we're talking about, right? right. And so there's a building authority that you recognize. High-ranking officers put their pistol into an armory, armory run by a sergeant. And if the pistol's not clean, <laughs> sir, I'm sorry, you're going to have to clean that pistol. Because it's the rules. And it's because of the bill of authority, like, ah, okay. You see what I'm saying? And what the church hasn't understood in the army is that there's bill of authorities. Does that make sense? We're trying to impose religious things that men have thought of instead of just being the body because it should flow seamlessly, Right? Does the arm fight this arm? No. And so that's what you're seeing, and this is manifesting. I told someone today, the kingdom of God is manifesting in this region. Ministers from different churches, members from different churches, probably wouldn't agree on anything if they would sit and argue about it, but why argue with your brother? Why argue about him? Keep the main thing the main thing. If we keep our eyes on Jesus and thus understand that no matter what office you hold, no matter what part of the body you are, we're working together should be to reach more people.